So enzyme inhibitors, real quick, what are things that destroy enzymes? Okay. Um, when enzymes become altered or denatured is the word they use a lot, um, enzymes are kind of like a lock and key mechanism. Okay. Uh, if you've ever taken a digestive enzyme, you probably know that there's different enzymes to digest the different types of food, which we're going to kind of go over. But to digest protein, you've got to have protease enzymes. So that's like a lock and key. Okay, that's the only thing that that enzyme does. It works on protein. Amylase, carbohydrates. That's the only thing it works on is carbohydrates. So once these enzymes get denatured or altered, they don't know how to function in the body. And they can actually be detrimental to the body. The body can see it as an invader and attack it, which can cause autoimmune illnesses. And that's what happens to people that eat, for example, if people that eat 100% cooked foods. They will eventually develop autoimmune diseases because they don't have any enzymes in their system. So cooking is one of the things that denatures enzymes. All drugs, and specifically pharmaceuticals. I mean, that's just another reason that why pharmaceuticals are so dangerous is they destroy enzymes in our body. Alcohol, free radicals, fluoride, food processing, you know, all of these things um, damage the enzymes in our body. Canning? Canning, yeah. Yeah, that's why they say, <laughs> they say canned food is not good. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. Canning versus like canning or? No, any canned like food which yeah, you see processed. Like the food that you get in the store or versus right, like the one which the you love to eat. <laughs> you know, if you do it in your own, you know, you're heating them up. Yeah. Yeah. You, when you can it at home, you heat it, don't you? Yeah. 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 So. Does it have to be a certain temperature before you destroy enzymes? Well, they say 118 degrees, and that's that's very general. That's what a lot of raw food is. They kind of use as their their benchmark. Yeah, 118 degrees, but it totally varies on the food. It can be anywhere from 110 up to 130 degrees, depending on the food. But that's why there's such a movement towards raw foodism and, and all that. And, you know, we'll, we'll talk more about that. I'm not a raw foodist. I never will be. But I understand and, and understand the importance of raw foods. But that doesn't mean you have to flip and go to extremes. Yeah, well, you mean you're not 100% raw food. But you Correct. Do, you eat raw food. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Everybody, I think, in the room has at least eats one time raw food. I'm not, sure. Not necessarily. Well, I hope yeah. so. No. 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 <laughs> Like carrots, you know, like fresh carrots, that's yeah. also <laughs> right. so, yeah. so, so the types of enzymes. We have digestive enzymes, and that's what most people think of when they think of enzymes. Enzymes that help them digest their food. Okay? So, what we have to understand here is that, well, you know what, I'm going to wait on that because we're going to get to that in another slide. So these are the different types of enzymes. There's more, okay, but these are just a few of the main ones. Protease protein, amylase, digest carbohydrates, cellulase, digest cellulose, like from plant cell walls, lactase, which comes from lactose, like milk sugar, and then lipase, digest fats. Yeah. What is amylase? Amylase, yeah, that's what digests carbohydrates in the body. Breaks down is carbohydrates. Like a, is it a term for, or is it the amla of the fruit? No, it has nothing to do with amla of the oh, fruit. No, it's just the name of that particular type of enzyme. Oh, okay. Yep. And the systemic enzymes do everything else. And we can't even list them because it's basically every other function that happens in your body. Thousands and thousands of functions go on every second in your body from systemic enzymes. And a good way to look at it is kind of like a bank account. Um, your body produces enzymes, but everything you put in your body has to be broken down by these enzymes. So if you eat lots of raw living foods, it doesn't have to be 100%, you know, I, I, and we're going to go over this kind of at the end, but I tell people at least shoot for 50-50, um, ideally 80-20, but the more raw living foods you eat, the less impact it has on the body because the body doesn't have to produce constantly enzymes because eventually that bank account's going to run out and that's when disease manifests or weight problems or diabetes, I mean, all kinds of things. But enzymes is the key to controlling all that. And according to a lot of, you know, a lot of people in the natural health industry, they'll tell you that's the key to aging, is your enzymes. And what they discovered is that after the age of 28 is when our enzyme production kind of starts to go down. So that's why it's a, it's a good thing to supplement. So digestive enzymes. 
They say you can digest your food half or more just by chewing 30 to 40 times like we're supposed to. Properly. Yep. Because there's very powerful enzymes in your saliva that start to break down your food immediately. But we don't normally do that. We just grab yes. it and we swallow it, you know. Dry so. food. <laughs> so chewing is important if you can think to do it. It's hard. Like I have to remind myself that I need to chew because it's not something we just regularly think of. Uh, the stomach, pancreas, liver all produce enzymes to help with digestion. So, no matter what you put in your body, no matter how many chemicals are in it, how many food colorings are in it, you know, how fatty it is, deep fat fried, McDonald's, no matter what it is and how bad it is for our system, our body has to deal with it. It has to find a way to break it down. It has to find a way to digest it. It has to find a way to eliminate it. And just like I said with that bank account, eventually it's going to catch up with you if over the long term you're not eating good foods. It's just inevitable. And as we already discussed, much easier on the system if you eat foods that already contain living enzymes. Because when you contain, when you eat raw living foods, basically they contain enzymes, enough enzymes for them to break down on their own without your body having to produce extra. Okay, so when you eat a nice salad, your body doesn't have to do any extra work. And we know that. We know if we eat good foods that it doesn't sit heavy and it, you know, doesn't weigh on us and it's not as hard for us to digest. So, so systemic enzymes. And this is just, it's so extensive. We're just going to go over a few things. Um, and we can, you know, if we, we can talk more about by digestion, but I know, I know a lot of people know about digestive enzymes, so I really kind of want to focus on the systemic enzymes, but if you have questions, you know, ask. Uh, the first thing is anti-inflammatory. Um, they work better than any aspirin, Advil, Motrin, anything else on the market without all the side effects. Uh, if you're not aware of it, aspirin and those non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs uh, kill over 10,000 people a year, but you never hear about it. it causes internal bleeding, um, stomach ulcers, uh, kidney failure, uh, all different types of problems. And you know, we we don't even think about it. We don't realize that it's a drug. You know, and some people pop them every night. Uh, it's very dangerous. But the systemic enzymes do the same thing without the side effects. I know. Antifibrotic. That basically means uh, fibrin. Okay which is what your body uses as a repair mechanism. Okay, so fibrin is what builds up, for example, on in your veins and arteries. Okay, when you have damage to your veins and arteries. Fibrin deposits there. When you have damage from an accident, when you have a broken bone or ripped cartilage or scar tissue that builds up, it builds up fibrin. Okay, and this fibrin is very dense, hard material, and over time, like a, a good example would be uh, somebody that's diagnosed with fibromyalgia. Okay, fibromyalgia, fibro. Okay, it's an excess buildup of that fibrin in the muscle tissues causes that person to be in constant, constant pain. And until you break down that fibrin and release those muscles, they're always going to be in pain. But did you also say it builds up in the arteries? Uh huh. So that would be more like plaque. Like, like plaque buildup. Arteriosclerosis. Yep, yep. arteriosclerosis, yep. exactly. Okay. Yep. Uh, it's a natural blood thinner. Uh, it, again, it works just as good or better than any uh, medication for thinning the blood. They even say uh, that systemic enzymes are contraindicated with anyone taking blood thinner medication. Like somebody's on a heavy duty blood thinner, like a Coumadin or something like that, they say not to take systemic enzymes because it'll thin the blood even further. Important for all cellular life. Um, all those actions that are going on within the cell happen with enzymes. Critical for the immune system. Antimicrobial, that's a big one. Uh, people that take enzymes on a regular basis just rarely get sick. All of those <clears throat> microbes that enter our system, they have a protein shell around them, like viruses and fungus and things like that. And this breaks down that protein structure and allows the immune system to easily destroy viruses and other invading pathogens. 
Can you say that again about the protein structure and the immune system? Mm -hmm. A lot of it, the invading viruses, for example, they all have a protein shell around them. Oh. Okay. And what I didn't mention about systemic enzymes is almost all the systemic enzyme blends you see are proteolytic enzymes, which means protein eating enzymes. And that's what eats up the, the scar tissue, you know, the arteriosclerosis, the viruses, reduces inflammation, or there's protein eating enzymes. I never thought of viruses still having a coating. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So and then an oxygen exchange. So those are just some of, like I said, thousands of benefits of systemic enzymes and some of the functions that they serve in the body.